Now, we have shared about the blessings of Abraham. And now, we want to look at who is the man who receives the blessing of Abraham. If you read Genesis chapter 11, the Bible says, Abraham and Nahor took wives for themselves. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. All right. The study Sarah was barren, she had no child. The study one, Terah took Abraham his son and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarah his daughter in law, his sons, Abraham's wife. They went out together from four of Chaldees in order to enter the land of Canaan. They went as far as Haran and settled there. Verse 32 The days of Terah were 205. Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's where we come in. All the nations of the earth. So Abraham went forth as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. Alright. Now when Abraham was 75 years old. He departed from Haran. And Abraham took Sarah his wife. And Lot his nephew. And all their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. Are you there? Abraham passed through the land as far as the side of Shechem to the oak of Moran. Now the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there. Amen. Amen. Okay. The first uh, person who God blesses is the obedient person. Someone who can obey God. Amen. Alright? Now that's a big question I want to ask you today. Can you obey God? Huh? How many of us don't pay our tithes sometimes? Can I have an honest raising of your hands? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I don't pay your tithes. At this age, you never pay tithes before. So sometimes you don't pay your tithes. Raise your hand. Yes. Okay. So most of us do not pay tithes regularly. Isn't it true? Or it's not true? Yeah. How many of us do not pray as much as an hour every day. Most of us now. Okay. Good. Now, obedience. You know, I could stay on this for a long time. But the truth is that um, you have to obey God. There's just no other way. Do you get it? Yes. Now, God cannot be seen. And the effect of obeying God is not something that happens, let's say, suddenly. Do you get it? 
Because you can't see him and he doesn't react like instantly. One pastor was having sex with uh, an Asha. Asha was a lady. Asha was a lady. That church had lady Ashes. So he was having sex with her. And um, as he was having sex with her, nothing happened. When he had sex with her, comes, everything seems to be wrong. So one day, he was having sex with a girl. And I think there was a, there was a church service also coming up after the sex time. <laughs> so the girl asked her, this is because the girl, very also, I mean, wicked person, when she was tired of it, or when she had had enough of it, when she came to say, made a big trouble for the pastor. The pastor lost his whole ministry over that girl. But one day, this is when she came to do one of the things she said. She asked him that, so, don't you feel bad when you are preaching after what we have done? That's what she asked. You understand what I'm saying? And then the pastor said, she, she said that the pastor said, oh, the anointing flows even more. The anointing flows what? Even more. Now, what is flowing is the grace of God. The mercy of God. The grace of God. But it does not look as though it has any effect. That's right. That's right. It does not look as though it has any effect. Mm. Almost everything to do with God doesn't have an instant effect. Mm. So without faith, there is no aspect of the Bible that you will obey. Because there is obedience to God. There are two main things. One is this, this factor that it doesn't look like it's powerful. It doesn't look like it changes anything. Mm. When you obey God today, nothing changes. <laughs> nothing will change. Wow. Nothing will change. So, nothing will change. But over time, everything will change. Oh. Yeah. Every, not, there won't be even one thing that will be left to change. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. Sir, reach. <coughs> You're preaching, Bishop. Yes. You don't pay your tithes. You don't pay your tithes. Nothing will change. You won't lose your job. You've read in the Bible. I have a book that I've, I've read. Why, how tithing Christians become rich, can wow. become rich, and why people who don't tithe will become poor. Mm-hmm. But over time, <laughs> they will not see, don't pay tithe, the devourer will come. The devourer came, that I was promoted. <laughs> when you don't pay tithe, they say the canker worm and the palmer worm will come and eat. Whatever, I'm still strong. Nothing has happened to me. I'm very strong. Strongest so far. I do this. If the anointing is more, I don't pray. God is still with me. When I preach, He's there. I don't pray, He moves. All those things are like that. Almost the whole of the obedience of God is like that. That's why when I was writing this tiny book, I started to look at how long I have been painted. That's when I realized I have been painted for 30 years. And out of those 30 years, one third, I was not working. Yeah. I was not as a student, but I paid tithes. You get it? Yeah. yeah. And it has had an effect gradually mm-hmm. on my life. Mm-hmm. Rather, don't close your eyes. Don't close your eyes. Nobody should close your eyes when I'm preaching. <laughs> One. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I 
come a long way for you to close your eyes. And close your eyes. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. When you obey God, says you should pray. I think we change that. Maybe that you might even have a car accident with your car. Wow. Yeah. wow. You may you may even get you may even get sick. When you pray. When you obey God, you will fall. It will have even more troubles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you join the church. One girl, she had a Boyfriend. A lot of she was a very beautiful girl. So I feel a lot of boys like her. <laughs> Pray that your daughter will not be very beautiful. <laughs> because just as she occurs to you, she has occurred to a lot of people. <laughs> Some of you were too beautiful when you were young. <laughs> That's affected you. <laughs> Everybody who passes by has plucked some of your fruits. Okay. What am I talking about? Over time. Over time. You see the effect. But not initial. There are some of us ladies here. Over time, your life is a nervous wreck. It's confusion. But it's not from an event that happened yesterday, or last week, or this year. Over time, accumulation of so many things makes you subway. It makes you subway to marry. If anybody who marries you is unlucky. It's, 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 it's back the wrong horse. God said I should work for him. Look, my father told me he would not like his son to be uh, lit from collections, from offerings. Do you get it? Yes. He would not like his son to live from offerings. But that's how I live. Everything I have is from offerings. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, I'm a priest. I'm not ashamed of that. That's my word. I live, I live off offerings. The money I spend is an offering. Money. You get it? Yeah. But uh, when I started out, I didn't have anywhere to stay. I mean, now we didn't live. There was nobody in the church who could be a member of the church. I mean, who could? Nobody even had a car. The car, the car that I was, the car that my father gave me. The first time I drove a brand new car was a student. And my father bought the car for me, brand new with the wrappers and everything, new, fresh. Yeah. 
as a person and as a student. And so that's the car that I had. That was the only church member in the church where the car was. Lost to myself. And I said, I will obey him. I heard God telling me, give thyself holy to my work. Give yourself totally to my work. Yeah. All my classmates, medical school, doctors, everybody left. Initially, it doesn't look like you have done anything right or wrong. Or, you see, of obedience, God is invisible, yeah. and the effects of obedience are over time. I'm telling you, that's, that's how it is. So that's how, you see, if you don't pay tithes, you don't pray, you don't read your Bible, you don't have your quiet time, you don't live a holy life, none of those things, you can't see it tomorrow. The effect of it is not in 2009. Mm-hmm. <laughs> over time. I'm telling you. That is why sometimes you find out that when God is doing miracles, he does it for only one person. Have you ever wondered why Jesus would go to a place, a lot of multitude of sick people, and you see only one person, and you heal the person? That's why I struggle so much to become a miracle healing evangelist or preacher. I didn't understand. You pray for people, a lot of them don't get. If somebody gets it, one person gets it, one person, a lot of people don't get healed. I struggled with God about this. I said that it's fake. I said, no, this type of healing is fake. It is not real. If it was real, if it was genuine, everybody would be healed because God is the one who's come to heal. I couldn't, I couldn't find the answers until one day. I went to a place in Ghana called Insawam Maximum Security Prison. When I got there, there were three sections, men, women, then condemned cells. Condemned cells are those who have committed murder and they have been condemned to death. Sentenced to death by hanging. They took me upstairs and showed me there's a hole. You walk in it and then they pull the whatever and then you fall through some concrete hole from upstairs to downstairs, and then you are dead. Hope you, hope you die quickly. You get it? Yeah. yeah. When I went there, I felt so sorry in my heart. And I wanted to release everybody from the prison. In fact, the guy who came to meet me, I, I don't know if his name was Abraham. He said, I asked him, what did you do? Why did you come here? He said that I, I killed somebody. Condemned. He was in the condemned cell. I said, oh, "Who did you kill?" So I killed my son. He said, "Oh." So so I, he looked at me. Said, "Oh, murder, murder. Everybody yes. here because of here, because of murder. Don't you know?" Oh, I don't know. Yes, it's murder. And he was holding his Bible, preaching. He was the leader of the fellowship in the condemned cell. Ah! I wanted to release them. So when I came out. I wanted to stand out at the prison, okay? I said, I declare today by the power of Almighty God that the gates be opened and all those inside be released now in the name of Jesus. Do you, do you think it can happen? Why can it not happen? There are reasons why the people are in there. There are reasons. There are legal reasons why they are there and why they are there for life and for this time, for this time, for this time. It's not just something that happened. And it's not something you can easily reverse. No matter who you are, even the president, when he's giving pardon, he has to give old people, people with terminal illnesses, people who have served over 30 years, people who have served over 20 years, you have to look at all that and you'll be pardoning. There's pardon, 500 prisoners, 1,000 prisoners, over 60 years, prisoners over 50, prisoners who have served for 30 years, who have served to thirds, one third of their sentence, half of their sentence, that's how he, even he cannot just pardon. But of course, he can pardon anybody he wants to. But he, they will show him all the people that he should pardon, that he'll sign. As he's going out of office or whatever, 
started and some of his friends who released them. It's not easy to be set free. That's why Jesus came. So all the people, all the sicknesses there, even the day that I will die, the day that you will die, there is a reason. I tell you, it's not something you just come out of. Problems in your life, as it is that. So you, one day I was praying for people. I said, Lord, I'm going to set them free. Because I'm a pastor, so I, I care for people. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. If you are not, if you don't care for people, you can't be a, a pastor. Yeah. Because people have problems. If you, if you don't care about people and about what they are experiencing, if you don't cry for them and cry with them, you cannot, you can never be a, a real pastor. You have to care for the people from your heart. So I felt so much in my heart for the people. And one day I was praying, praying, praying. God was not moving. And then, then, then I started to pray. I said, Lord, where are you? Why are you not moving? And he asked me that. Who asked me to go and pray? I said, I have sent myself, so I should release them myself. Look at the trouble I have. So I just quickly went back to the pulpit to continue my message. <laughs> so there are reasons. Some of you disobey God for years. Yeah. You said there is nothing like Kankawen. Yeah. You said there is nothing like Locust. Mm-hmm. You said there is nothing like Devora. Yeah. You will not pay tithes. Yeah. You said there is nothing like Caterpillar, yeah. which can eat up your well. Yeah. So, okay. So, you go on for years. And the Caterpillar, too, it walks slowly. Yeah. So, it can <laughs> 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 There's nothing like farmer well. <laughs> there's nothing like canker well. Yeah. Uh, you say there's nothing like that. So when, I pay, when I pay that, I don't pay that. Nothing happens. When I give up, I don't give up. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. The only thing that is affected by the credit crunch. That's all. The only thing that is real is credit crunch. God is not real. That's what you are concerned about. But you are not concerned about that you obeyed God or you didn't obey God. That's how, that's how things are in your life. And you see, I can see as a pastor, the years will go by, the years will go by, the years will go by. You see that the, all of the lives of our members are like this. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we, the pastors, we know the members are not obeying the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we cannot do much. Yeah. And we cannot drive them out of the church. Yeah. So we just stay with them. So that when we are smiling at you, in our head, we are thinking that, oh, look at what this person is doing. But at the point, we don't even say it anymore. At the point, we don't even speak anymore. We just smile with you and just allow you to be around. But what is in our head? Ah, we don't say it. We don't say what we are thinking. Because if we say it, it's like we are driving you away. Are you there? So, obeying God, you may think that it's nothing. I obey her. I don't obey. Nothing changes in my life. Yeah. Some of you here, even within this week, you have co- committed fornication. You've also yeah. yeah. It's like nothing matters. Maybe you are the class where you are committing fornication. Yeah. And it doesn't matter to you. Continue to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Saying that yeah. there is no God, or it's, it's the same as saying there is no God. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. The fool says yeah. that there is no God. It's the fool who says that it doesn't matter. God doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. And you see us, ladies, who when you get married, we have to advise you and counsel you to have sex. Now, brother, you are jumping and killing somebody's life. Energy. When you get married, they have to beg you to do it. Are you listening? One day, some three brothers went to play golf. They were going there, they were going to play. 
had to give up. I had to, it cost me a lot to come and pray this God. I had to promise my wife that I'll do this. I'll take her here. I'll take her here. I'll do this. Yeah. And the other brother too said, me? It cost me a lot. But I, I promise I'll have to buy this. I have to do this. I have to do that. Oh, you see me here. The, guy, the other brother and the third brother. <laughs> what did it cost you? It didn't cost me anything. Hey, it didn't cost you. No. I just asked. I just said, oh, I wanted to have sex. Should I have sex or go and play God? So we go and play God. And that's why the devils are very happy to 
conveniently hide behind money. Yes. They sit behind the gold and the silver. And the, the whole world is being manipulated as if it's being controlled by money, but actually it's devils. Yeah. Wow. That's what it is. So, the first disconnection from that power is tithing. It's the first disconnection. That's why I said I've been paying tithing since I was a student. And I remember that I paid tithing because of the advice I gave from my friend. Sister, that's what makes me remember. So, you lose the, the power, the power is lost. Now, when God tells me that, okay, leave your profession that you studied hard, which you know you are going to end. So, you see, again, He's disconnecting you yeah. from another power. Yeah. Yeah. You see, yeah. at a higher level, and another level, and another level, and another level. So he keeps disconnecting you and bringing him closer to himself. Right. But the most basic, early, basic, foundational disconnection mm. that you have is the tithing. Yeah. Where you believe what Leviticus 27 verse 30 says that the tithe belongs to the Lord. It is God's mandate. So when that basic one has not happened in your life, then you are so basically connected to devils and connected to the world, to the world system and controlled by money and not by God. Mm. It's the most basic. Oh, yeah. When I find a Christian who does not pay that, it, 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 it is one of the first signs of backsliding. It's not pay that. Yeah. When, when a person who pays tithes is backsliding, first thing he stops is paying tithes. Yeah. It's one of the first, one day there was a sister whose husband was backslide, but she didn't want to accept it. So I said to her, that's your husband paid. I said, oh, he's not paid for some time, he stopped. And I said, look, your husband's backslide. And today he's not in the church. But this was a person who his, his, his products in the church are pastors. Not that he is a pastor, his products are pastors. And he's, he's off. Went off five to deeper, but the first time was not tired. But again, I said that you can laugh at it if you want. Yeah. Yeah. My blessings are so much that I cannot say them. Oh. If I, I wish, as a pastor, that I could even share with you oh. some of the things that God has blessed me oh, yeah. with as I've been serving Him and following Him. Mm. Never in my wildest imagination would I have been able to organize for myself what God has done for me. Mm. As I've been serving you. It's true. I know, Master. I've, I've, I've been there. I've been there where I see people and you wish that they will remember to give you $100 or $50. I've been there. It's, I've, I've been at that stage of my life before. But I'm at a stage where if I lose hundred dollars, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know that I've lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I've been there for where I walk and I'm looking for some money that somebody has dropped. If or will open my eyes to see something on the floor. Have you been there before? Have you been there before? Lord, bless me today. Let somebody drop 50 pounds and let me pick it to the end of Jesus. But it has never happened to me before. But I'm, I've been with a brother who has, it has happened to me before. A lot of money. He's not a lot, but he's, he's, he's always able to get money from the ground. In fact, he has a particular place that he goes to harvest. <laughs> Prayer. Prayer is like that. If you like, don't pray. Nothing will change in your life. If you preach it, like, don't pray and preach. Nothing will change. Don't wait on God. Nothing will change in your ministry. It's true. <laughs> it's that, that's, that's how it is. Don't pray. Don't be there. Don't pray. This week, next week, nothing will change. Over time. The one that I learned some of this from prayer, like Yogi Joe, which is praying, praying, that's how the largest 
He was he was sharing. You know, he's 74 years old. He was telling us. He said that last 10 years he has given offerings of 170 million dollars. Wow. That's the offering that he has given. 170 million. Huh? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Be so rich. It's possible. And he, one of his, his emphasis on life is the blessing of Abraham. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> so you, you, you may not know. He believes in prayer. 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 Tithing. All these things. But what I'm saying is that if you like to be there, don't pray. Nothing will change. You can't pray. People say, I thought I was going to do that. That's the very shiny, it was very good, it was correct, yes, it was powerful. No, that's what you say. You know, you don't pray. But they are blessed. Isn't it? Yeah. You commit fornication, abortion, you are taking pills, loops, everything. You are having them. You are in the church. I think we have to. The pastor cannot see inside your vagina to see that there's a loop. The Bible says that uh, a man had a wedding and he had ten virgins. Isn't it? Ten virgins who were. Coming for the wedding. That's right. All of them were virgins. And it's not easy to get a virgin these days. But they were all virgins. Yeah, the Bible say 10 were virgins, 10 were not, but they were all virgins. Yeah, all. 10 virgins. They were all dressed in the same way. They all had lamps. But the difference was something little which made a big difference. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a little thing. But you see that it will change everything. So my friend, so you see my brother, my sister, you need to obey the Lord. You need to decide like Abraham. If you want Abraham's blessings, what is it that God says? I am going to try. Amen. Now we as pastors, even if you don't obey, we will still love you. Yeah. We will still see you in the church. We will see how is it. When trouble comes, you call us, we will come. Yeah. We will come and sit there. Oh, oh, so. Let's pray in Jesus' name. But we know that the prayer will not be answered. Yeah. You understand? And we know that nothing will change about it. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what should we do? We, we have to pray. We have to come. So we know. Because the thing is more than, it's not, it's not just what you calling us. You see, that's why I said, when I went to that prison, I wanted to release everybody. But you learn with time that the things that are happening, they, they, they go way beyond what you know? Tell me. One day, there was a certain lady. She was a powerful lady. Yeah. And how do I say this story? Her life ended. And she died in a very unfortunate way. You know? And I felt very, very, very sad when she died. Very, very sad. In fact, her, her son was describing to me how the body was. Hey, I felt so sad. As he was describing. But you see, that's all that you know. Mm. It's a very hard person. Then one day, my mother, who knew that lady, just passed a comment. And I said, hey. She described how this lady went for somebody's husband and destroyed the, the family. Took the man 
And that family was disintegrated by this woman. I mean, she, she, she was not relating it to the woman's death. But it was just something that she just, she just mentioned as history. Something that would happen. But later I sat back and I said, hey. You see, many times we do not connect this and this. This and that. I'm not saying that that happened to her because she did this. But you see, you don't know. You don't know. That's as you disintegrated somebody's house. Maybe a disintegration has also come to her. Do you get it? What I'm trying to explain to you, my brother, my sister, is that Christianity, there is a God who behaves as if he is not alive. I said, there is a God who behaves as if he is is deaf and dumb. But he says in his word, my hand is not short. My ear is not closed. That I cannot see. That I cannot stretch out my hand. But it is it is to allow us to walk the walk of faith. And obey him and obey him and obey him and obey him until the very end. And every time you obey God, he will come up with something else that you have to obey. That is a little more. And a little more. And a little more. And a little more. And a little more. Hallelujah. So it's the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of long life, the blessings of riches. The blessings of family uh, 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 survival, of marriage, the blessing of, of your descendants, the blessings of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are to come upon you. It will start with obedience. I was sitting by a certain man two days ago and he told me, he said, I have seen angels many times. He said, I was with you. The first time I saw an angel was I fasted for 40 days. The angel came to me. And the man told me, he said, I had, I own 300 houses. Yeah. 300 houses, one man in America. A pastor. He said, now I have only 46 houses. Yeah. He said, Some of them are off. Yeah. He said, the first I put, can he fast for 40 days a night? Maybe when he fast for 40, if the Lord has, if the Lord has asked you to fast for 40 days a night, you may also see an angel. That's true. I have never fasted 40 days in life before. And he has not asked me to fast 40 days in life. And you go and fast 40 days in life. You can easily die. So be careful. Okay? Are you listening? I wish you would start to obey God. How, how can you obey God? Many of you here, you, you are not even at the level where we, we, we even talk about obeying God to be a pastor. Do you see? Yeah. One day, One day. I went to a certain town in Europe. And this town was full of, uh, I went to the church. And when I was there, I realized that I could not share anything about working for God. You know why? Because of the people that were in the church. <laughs> Look, as I was sitting at the back of the pastor, he was showing me the people. There were three ladies that were leading the worship. <laughs> so I said, who are those? <laughs> that one is a prostitute. <laughs> that one is a witch. They showed me, these ones are witches. Some of them that these are witches. These are prostitutes. <laughs> Which is a prostitute? She out. Some, one of them even came to give a testimony one day. Yeah, she gave a testimony that she was at work, a prostitute. And a certain man came and he was pumping, 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 doing everything. And then suddenly he had a heart attack or something. He collapsed and he fell down. And she rose up in the name of Jesus. She and then the man rose up. You get it. We cannot go further. So the 
then I asked the pastor, I said, look, why don't you let these girls stop the prostitution? Why don't you let the girls stop it? He said, look, the kind of money that they earn from the prostitution, there is no job they can do that, that comes anywhere near what they, what they get from the prostitution. So, and he told me that every lady that he knows has done some of that work before. And he said some of them have come, he was telling me about some Nigerian ladies that have come, they have cut their pubic hair and made a cushion with it and done some covenants and other things. Pay $50,000, they have to pay the $50,000 back and other things before they are free from that covenant. You know, all kinds of things. So you, you look at it and you say, wow. You know, I mean, we cannot yet, we have to talk about breaking of that covenant. If God said, come out of it. Can you break that covenant and come out of it? See, but many people will not. And don't, don't look as if straight. Yeah. Many of us are more than prostitutes. Yeah. When you count the number of people that you sleep with yeah. different yeah. ways and times, they may not give you cash, but in kind, you are praying in kind. <laughs> It's true. We cannot go further to talk about other things. Because the basic obedience to God is not there. True or not true? true. Is what I'm saying true or is not true? true. Yeah. So God wants us to grow up. Amen. Amen. And start to obey Him in some of the most basic things that are there in the Word of God. That's why I'm talking about tithing. We are not talking about even being a partner of him, Jesus, or even giving any special offering. Yeah, I, I prefer, I want you to pay your tithe than to give any special offering. I prefer that you pay your tithe. Yeah. The only reason why we take special offering is because people don't pay tithe. If you were to pay your tithe, we would never take any special offering. Yeah. Maybe we would, but we wouldn't even need it much. Remember, we went to a church, they don't, they don't even take offerings. Oh. It took three days, they don't take offerings. And he told me 90 something percent, everybody pays that. Wow. And if they give one offering, the highest you have ever seen before from a congregation like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, brothers and sisters, obedience to God is very, very important. And I want you to start to obey God in the most basic. God says, go, go. Come to church. Come to church. That one too is a struggle. How will your children start from the level of 1,400 when they have not learned the culture of coming to church? Eh? How many of you have got children? What are you teaching your children if you don't go to church regularly? If they never see you pray, you think they will ever learn how to pray? No. That's why I said that. You see, you are going to let your children start also from zero. Just as you are at zero, starting from zero. They are also going to start from zero. Yeah. Because they, they never saw mommy pray. I mean, that one day, I was speaking to a certain young lady who was the daughter of somebody who was getting divorced. And up, surprisingly, the lady, the little the young girl was on the side of her mother. You know when they are divorcing, the children choose which side. But surprisingly, the, the daughter was on the side of the husband. And one of the things she said, my mother doesn't pray. My mother doesn't even say she doesn't read the Bible. She said the only time I've seen my mother read the Bible is if she's going to preach. She's only watching films. Films, 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 films. She doesn't pray. That's the only time I've seen her read the Bible is when she's going to preach. So you see, you see the children are watching. They've never learned that mommy prays, daddy prays. And they will grow up and they will say, like I told you, President Nixon. He will say, My mother said, my father said. My mother always told me, my father said, see, and they don't see it in you. And so we always went to church. 
We always went to church together on Sunday. We always went to church. My mom always prayed. My father always prayed. That's how you train a child. Training is different from teaching. It's not talking. They watch over repeated. Mommy does this. Mommy does this. Daddy does this. Daddy does this. Mommy does this. Mommy does this. Daddy does this. But they don't see anything new from you. I've seen something else. Huh? How, would they, how would they start from a, a higher level from where you started from? How would things be better when they didn't see it? That's why sometimes you allow your children to come to them so that even they will take the pastor as their father. Preach! Yeah, so they will take the pastor as their father. Yeah. And then the, the, the pastor in the church becomes the father that they can look up to. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so my brother, obeying God is very, very important. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet and pray that God will give you the spirit of obedience. Now, the next important area of people who receive the blessings of Abraham are people who operate in the dimensions of visions and dreams. Amen. Now, the Bible says that the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Amen. Amen. Now, one of the main differences that you will discover between people who experience the blessings of Abraham is that there are people who believe that visions, dreams are real, that they are true. There are things that guide us and affect our lives. Amen. So you, you need to become a person who is like that. Do you understand? Because God speaks to us through visions and dreams. Now, visions and dreams are a direct result of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit was prophesied about, the Bible says, and I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the young men will have visions and the old men will have dreams. Alright? So, there is even dreams and visions are, to me, more evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit than tongues. Do you get it? Yeah. When I meet somebody who has a vision and a dream, and the person has a belief in the visions and the dreams, I have usually come into contact with somebody who is a deeply spiritual person. Amen. Amen. You cannot do much with God without coming into contact with that dimension. Now, why is that important? Because, you see, what uh, do you know what is what 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 Yongi Cho teaches is that you know what is one dimension, one line, two dimensions, two lines, and three dimensions is three dimensions, isn't it? You know what the three dimensions is? like, yeah. Is it huh? 
length, breadth, and height. So one is length, then length and breadth. That's two sides. Two, a dimension is a measurement. One measurement, two measurements, and then three measurements. So length, breadth, and height. So whatever the one dimension is controlled by the three dimensions. Do you understand it? Yeah. It is or it is within it. Yeah. The, the, the length is within the three. Yeah. The breadth is within the three. The height is also within yeah. the three. Yeah. You get it? So it is controlled or it is determined by the three. Now what he's also saying is that there is a fourth dimension. So that by the three dimensions is where the physical world that we live in. So this world is controlled by another dimension which you can't see. Wow. Do you see? Yeah. A physical world is controlled by another dimension which you can't measure and you can't touch. But that's actually what controls what is happening in this world. Yeah. And within that world, right, is where the decisions are taking place. Yeah. That is where things happen. Now, if you read the Bible, you'll find that people died long before they died. If you read Revelation, or even let's start with the Canaanite land. They lost their land long before they knew they were out. Because God brought somebody who was to look straight, look here, look here, look here. I've given it to you. They were in it. So before it happens, it's determined from another world. Yeah. So if you don't have any powers in that world, you are not going to do well yeah. in life. How many understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. So that is the dimension that you need power in. For instance, in Ghana, we recently had elections. Now, all the big business the powerful business, the businesses that have money coming into them. Do you see? Or most of the big business, the oil that we have found in Ghana, the gold, the big things that really bring money and make people very rich, are controlled by the government mm. and therefore are controlled by the party that has come into power. So if you don't have any powers in there, you are not going to get access to the big things. Do you understand? So that is why people try to, in Ghana, people try to have, they join two parties, so that if this party wins, we are with them. If this party wins, we are with them. But unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work, because if you prosper under one party, you are seen as belonging to them truly. If you prosper under another party, you are seen as belonging to that party. So sometimes it doesn't work. Are you there or you go home? All right. So where does the power come from? Which, what, where the, the thing that controls what we see, where does it come from? Do you have access there? Do you understand? Yes. So for instance, me, even in the country, there are things I could do if I have access wow. to some of the parties. So I wouldn't mind at all having access. Do you get it? Yeah. To the presidents, to the people that have power. Because that's where the whole thing is coming from. You may come with the best, whatever, you may be the right person, you may be the best person for the country, but they will never choose you. Yeah. They never choose the best. They choose the one who is there. <laughs> that is why the country doesn't go forward. Yeah. Because what is happening to the country is not what is best by just who they know. Are you there? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. All right. I hear you have supper at 6 o'clock. So I'm going to end in the next three minutes. Amen. Are you there? So, where is your power base? Do you have any powers there? Now, how do you get power in the world which controls you get power by accessing it through the means the mediums that work in that realm you see there are things that work in there 
You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There are powers there. And you need to be able to use those powers. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Look, Ghana is going to earn a lot of money from oil. A lot of people are going to eat that money. <laughs> Who is going to eat that money? The powers that be are there and they are deciding. You understand? That's why people want to get access to the political power because that's where the whole thing is. So you, you see, your, your, your life is determined from somewhere. Yeah. I'm telling you. Look, the Bible says there was, a, there was a, a horse and there was a rider. The rider on the horse was called Death. Do you see? And Death was walking. You know, so he went, a famine, a death came to the world. Then another one was sent, famine. And then there was famine. So before you actually see the credit crunch, a horse has come to move through the system with a famine and credit crunch waiting on him. Yeah. And it's moved. it has already happened. Mm-hmm. Even this credit crunch, they have not seen the real one that is coming. Right. These are all just symptoms. Because what is going to come, they cannot cure. Because God will show mankind that his systems do not have the power, you see, to uh, withstand the end of the world. Because it will not even be banks, but currencies, currencies will disappear. It's true. Currencies will go out of use. Yeah? And just 40 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, before when Hitler came, there was, they used a wheelbarrow to buy a loaf of bread. A wheelbarrow full of German banks. One wheelbarrow full to buy just a loaf of bread. That's why Hitler came to, to, to restore. It's not long. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the point that I'm trying to establish with you, my dear friends, is that within that power base, you need access. Now, if you are unspiritual, you will have no access to that dimension, the fourth dimension, which controls the third dimension. The third dimension is your physical life. Therefore, there's a dimension that controls what you are doing. What happens in this third dimension? And until you gain have powers in there, you are useless. Because you, you can fiddle with the third dimension, but then Somebody will press here, here, up there, and then everything will change. When you are working in the third dimension, you need a husband. You you will have you will follow certain steps. Yeah. What are the steps to getting a husband? Be friendly, smile, do your hair, paint your nails, uh, chat, develop a chatting line. Uh, uh, how do I, uh, it seems I know you somewhere. Uh, and what? It seems I know you somewhere. You look familiar. Do you go to school? Whatever. Huh? Then the next one is what? How do you get? Uh, huh? oh, buy gifts. Send a text message. Or how to be a good husband? Or how to improve your marriage? Go for love walks. Make tea in the bedroom, send texts, take the children to school, buy flowers, buy chocolate, bath together, go for nice walks, yes. buy a swimming suit, spend some money, take care shopping, you know, speak gently, all other steps. But the spiritual. So that is the third dimension. But something can be played in the fourth dimension. Your marriage, you yeah. go for love work, you send love notes, you stick notes on the fridge, you do everything, you call, you do shopping, the whole thing will get up because somebody has pressed it from the fourth dimension. So the third dimension is cracking up. The fourth dimension is controlling the third dimension. It's overruling it. Overriding. It's called override. 
It overrides everything you have done and you are doing in the third dimension. So you need to develop your strength in that dimension. That is the dimension that is important. You may be strong with muscles and have this and have that, but if you have not developed yourself in the fourth dimension, do you get it? You will not do much. So you can see that Abraham was somebody who was developed in the fourth dimension. Where there are visions, there are dreams, there are spiritual entities, there is spiritual communication with spiritual entities and beings that control things. One day, Yogi Cho was talking about how he was having marital problems, serious ones. And then one day, he started praying in the spirit. You know? He prayed and he heard some, something screaming and then the thing went out of the house. And then from that time, all the marital problems went away. So you realize that, that the thing is spiritual. Many things that we are fighting about in the third dimension, the dimension of do this, take this step, move this, take a step here, change your clothes, smile, do the physical thing, make the food he likes, do that. It is not working. Paint your legs, do your hair, buy new clothes, change your style, change your whatever, I mean, whatever you change. <laughs> it is not working because, because once it is pressed, have you read this book before, Tintin? <laughs> have you read Tintin? There is one, Tintin and something. Uh, they went somewhere. Huh? Is it in Tibet? Not Tibet. Is it the Picaro? Some South America something. And then there was some weak doctor with a dog. And then they push a needle in. When they push the needle, they you know, get a sickness. You are far away. Then they just put one needle in there. They say, yeah, you come. You are far away. Then they say, you come. Then you push another needle in there. Another sickness will come at another place. Hey! Four dimensional things. We're pricking them. Pricking them. When they prick you, then you see that the thing is working on you. Yeah. So the question is that if you are not strong in God, and strong spiritually, how can you also fight in that well? You have no powers. You have no powers. You have no abilities in that realm. And that is the realm of faith. The realm where you fight in things that have to do with faith. And without faith, and without operating in that realm where you need a lot of faith, you can simply not succeed. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So that is the dimension that Abraham operated in. A person who experienced Abraham's blessings or the blessings of Abraham is somebody who operates in the fourth dimension. The dimension of dreams and visions. Amen. Amen. And so how to operate in that fourth dimension is what we are going to go into in the next session. When we come back to how many want to be operators of the fourth dimension? Hey! Operators of the fourth dimension. Yeah. You press certain buttons and do certain things in that dimension before you realize certain things are taking place in the spirit world. And it is now manifesting in the ten, the ten dimensional world in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for a superior advantage that you have given to us in the fourth dimension. That we can also operate in that world and in that realm to control the third dimension in the third dimensional world. We thank you for the blessings of Abraham are ours in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, before we go, I want, to, I want us to sing a song. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. You know that song, don't you? 
Children. 